Good morning everybody and welcome back to Leeton. My name's Jason and this channel is all about our journey to become more self-sufficient in fruit, veg, eggs and maybe some honey. Now it's polytunnel part three and that means we're gonna have to put the frame together loosely in this area so that we can have a look at it see if anything's got to be done see where we've got to dig holes for the foundation tubes that we made in part two and just get a feel for how it's going to fit in this space etc then when we've done that we'll get the holes dug get the base rail and foundation tubes put together get them concreted in and then we can lift the frame onto the foundation tubes and that's that's the plan for this video so we're probably going to be doing this over a couple of days today is the 23rd of february 2023 and it is cold so i'm gonna have a cup of tea then i'm gonna come back out and make a start and i'm gonna have a helper today as well because it's half term so my 14 year old lad is going to be helping me Okay, so we've got a couple of hoops loosely put together. It's actually quite difficult, even with two people, because it's all trying to fall over. So, but <clears throat> I wanted to get two, two together so I could measure the distances between and everything else. And then one metre centres, which is what you would expect, seven hoops on a six metre tunnel. But I just wanted to check that because I didn't know how well this accuracy was on, on this these hoops. So what we're going to do is the wooden beams that are over on the wall there we're going to mark them out at 100 centers drill the holes mount the foundation tubes that i made the other day on them lay them out on the ground dig the holes get one side set and then measure and do the other side getting it all square and then we can just drop these hoops straight into them foundation tubes and they'll all stay upright. That's the plan anyway. So we've measured that the hoops are at one metre centres. So using one of the foundation tubes that we've made and lining it up with the edge, just leaving a couple of millimetres, we're going to mark the thickness of the tube on the wood and measure the centre of that so that's 36, 37 mil. So 15, about 18 millimeters is the center. So that's our center line that we've got to drill on. Not these. the whole centres of the mountain holes. So the whole centres are 70, 70 millimetres. And that is Forty mil, so seventy is the centre. Thirty-five, seventy. 
So that's the centre of the beam, that way. That's the centre of our tube, that way. And then that, and that, is where we're going to drill the holes. So we now know, because the tubes are a thousand millimetre centres, we can measure from there, Centre of the next tube, and we'll repeat that process all the way along this plank, and then we'll drill 10 millimetre holes through here and here, all the, in the, all the positions, so that we can mount the foundation tubes. So we've got to drill these really accurately, all right, mate. Make sure you keep your drill vertical, 90 degrees to the wood. Don't lean on the drill like that. Stand back a bit so that you can see what you're doing. So what we need to do now is bolt that to this piece of wood and then one at every every metre that we've drilled. We've got these bolts with penny washers to spread the load on the wood. And I've gone for nylock nuts with the little plastic locking mechanism in them so that the wind doesn't rattle the nuts loose. So we've got to put these on all the way down now, tighten them up, getting them square with the wood. bolted on square so that when we set the wood level these bars are vertical these foundation tubes are vertical so we've got the foundation tubes bolted loosely to the base rail. Obviously this base rail needs to be extended because this is a 4.8 meter bit piece of wood and the polytunnel is 6 meters. But it's just laid here for now and what we can do now is mark where we need to dig holes for these to go into the ground. Now this is actually the wrong way around. This rail will actually be for that side of the tunnel, not this side, because the wood needs to be on the outside of these 
pole, these posts. But to mark out where the holes go in is perfectly okay. So what we're going to do a bit of sand and just mark where we want to dig the holes. One side almost in. Alfie's just digging uh, another hole there, and we've just got to extend this rail to two posts basically. <clears throat> so another two meters ish. And then that side will be done, ready for concreting. Might need to put uh, some bricks just to wedge things to straighten this up. This piece of wood's a little bit bowed but we can sort that when we do it. Uh, and then once we've got that done, we will get that side of the frame in place, dig the holes, get that in, and then we can put some wood across the ends. We'll just put solid pieces across, and then when we put the door frame in, concrete that in, we'll cut the opening out. So, a lot more work to go yet. Right, you need to hold that end, yeah? doing here this piece of wood we've got to extend the bottom rail because the wood's only 4.8 meters and the polytunnel's six meters so I'm drilling holes here for another one of the foundation tubes and I'm putting a 10 mil hole here through these so we're using an 8 millimeter bolt to bolt the rail to the tubes we've got a 9 millimeter hole in the tubes and we've got a 10 millimeter hole in the wood and that gives us enough room wiggle room to get the bolts through Slightly. Let's hold it there. 
just push it towards me a little bit that's it down a bit to a fraction all right now lift fraction well whoop. down a touch down a bit down Okay, so we're starting to make some progress now. So that side is just about all in and level. A little bit of tweaking. Um, got the end across. And like I said, once the door frame goes in, gets concreted into the ground, I'll cut the opening. I'm gonna have a wider door at that end than this end. The reason being, that end I'm gonna have my um, staging my little potting bench and it's right by the compost base so I might want to bring a wheelbarrow or compost in at that end whereas this end would just be a normal doorway now this piece it's just offered up at the moment it isn't level and we're gonna have to dig out a little bit here and we've marked where the the beam goes with some sand so we know where to dig not much just a few inches just to drop this end so it's level with that side So that's the end of day one. This side's in, most of that side's in. Um, and we've got the first two hoops on just to see what it looked like. And it's actually a lot of headroom, which is good because it means I can go from this junction there to that junction with a crop bar. I want to put crop bars across. And that'll actually reinforce those joints as well. So, pretty good. So yeah, quite happy with that. A lot of reinforcing to do on the frame yet. But if we can get this side finished tomorrow, so we've got some pretty deep holes. So in the morning, We'll get these last two posts in and then the piece across there and then i think i'm going to put all the hoops up in the frame tighten it all up and because that will actually hold everything in place and then put the concrete in i think that would be a better way of doing it
against the tube. Yeah. In. Don't, don't hold it there on this one and then change to something like that. On the next one. Keep it some place, right? So hold it on the inside of this. string and then go to that one. Okay, well, it's really starting to take shape now. So this morning we got on, got this side finished and the end rail across. And then we've got all the frame up. Now none of this is bolted up tight. It's all just finger tight to get it assembled. And I'm gonna go around and tighten them all up now, straightening things as we go. If you look at that ridge bar, it's, it's not very straight. Okay guys, so we haven't done the concreting. Back's feeling a little bit twingy 
and I'm not going to push it. We'll do it tomorrow. I'll have a bit of a rest. Um, but you don't need to see me putting concrete in the holes. It is what it is, isn't it? You know, you've dug the hole, half fill it with concrete. So that's it assembled. The bolts are nipped up. It does need a bit of tweaking here and there to sort of make things plumb and straighten things up a bit. But overall, not bad. The, the frame itself that I've bought needs some diagonal braces without a doubt. It is, you can push it from one end and rock it. So it's got to have some diagonal braces in, but my plan to reinforce it should resolve that. But that's going to be in a future video. So, happy days. I wanted to get it to this point so that I can make the beds on both sides of the, the tunnel and the bed on the other side of the tunnel over there. Because I've got stuff growing, I'm going to have to find somewhere to put it. And then throughout the summer, I can do the reinforcing in the tunnel. And then in the autumn, we can put a cover on it, a proper cover. So that's the plan. So this probably won't change too much now for a few months throughout the summer. Other than where the beds are going inside, obviously. So any tips, of, what other tips have I got for you having put one of these together? Well, the first one is the hoops are made up of four pieces. So you've got four pieces in each hoop and you've got a male and a female end, obviously. Make sure when you're putting this together that one side of the tunnel is either all male or all female. So the first section coming up is all, all male or all female. Because if you mix and match, you'll get most of them together and then you'll end up with a couple that you've got a piece that needs a male male and you don't have any male male tubes for example. So that's the first tip, make sure one side is all male or all female. Doesn't matter which, because the other side will then fit. The other tip I have for you is, if you're gonna use a battery screwdriver or something like that to tighten up the nuts, like I did, make sure you've got it on a really low torque setting because the tube's thin. So on my Dewalt screwdriver, I had it on number three. And that was just enough to crush the tube a little bit, nip up the nut, and then it would hit the clutch and, and uh, slip. If you were to leave it on, say, number 10 or 15, it'd just flatten the tube. So that's the other tip. Uh, but yeah, not too bad. It is a blow away frame, and I am gonna have to reinforce it a lot to make it stand the winds that come across this field. But that's in the future. We've achieved what we wanted to achieve in getting that growing area ready for the summer. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please hit the like button. If you haven't already subscribed, please do. Um, means a lot. We've picked up a lot of subscribers lately and thank you to everybody that has subscribed recently because well, throughout the history of the channel because you are the people that make the difference. That's why we make the videos, uh, as well as for our own sake and memories of looking back in years to come. So thank you very much. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys.